If you're dealing with restless leg syndrome, the symptoms alone can be enough to drive you nuts, but it's also important to understand that some of the underlying causes of RLS may be creating more significant issues. And even if they're not, if RLS is keeping you from sleeping, it's keeping you from just being a human being. How are you going to function as a human if you didn't get any sleep because you were jogging in your bed all night? So in this video, I'm going to help you understand the most common causes for RLS and also give you four steps that you can take to fix it yourself. What? It must be your birthday or something. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Go ahead and put in the comments section what type of symptoms you experience from your RLS because it can really vary from person to person. You hear people describing it as, you know, I feel like a crawling or creeping or, or aching or burning or itching or even like an electric type feeling. And it'll really be different for every person. And I know that you really want there to be like this solution where anybody can just take this supplement and it'll fix RLS, but understand that that's never going to happen because the underlying cause for restless leg syndrome can really vary from person to person. So how could one thing fix it for everybody? I mean, just look at the symptoms that we just talked about. They're really different from person to person. So what we need to understand what to do is how to look at a person's bioindividuality and see what's causing the RLS for them and then address that situation. So we're going to go through the most common causes today and it's going to be up to you to figure out what's the reason that you're having the RLS issues. So the first thing we need to understand with RLS is minerals. There are minerals in the body like calcium and magnesium that are responsible for allowing those tissues to relax. Some minerals are needed for tissues to contract and allow that muscle to actually do the work and other minerals are needed for them to relax. And when there's a lack of minerals at that tissue level, it can create almost what I feel like is leg anxiety. Just like the, the tissues are not comfortable with the situation because there's not enough minerals there available for those tissues to relax. And this is very common for someone not to have enough minerals in the system because a lot of the health issues that we see today can come from not enough minerals. Things like depression and anxiety and some forms of insomnia and the list can go on and on. So we know that it's very common for someone not to have enough minerals in the system. So if this is the issue for you, you can take steps to lift the minerals in your system. One thing is you can supplement with minerals. Another remedy that kind of shows some good results for a lot of people with RLS is to rub magnesium oil into your legs. That seems to bring relief for some people and I don't feel like that's the answer. If you're missing minerals, you really want to get them in the system so that they can be distributed where they need to be. But this does seem to bring some relief for some people and help us understand a little bit better that, oh wow, these minerals at that tissue level really are important because when I rub this magnesium in there, I, I get some relief. Again, this is not going to create relief for everybody, but if this is the cause of your RLS, it can really turn some things around for you. Another confirmation that this is a problem for a lot of people is that one of the most popular solutions for RLS these days is for doctors to use anti-seizure medications. And we talk about seizures in some of our other videos and we kind of explain that a lot of people that are dealing with seizures are dealing with them because minerals and blood sugar are both going too low at the same time, leaving the body with no resources. And a lot of these anti-seizure medications work because they restrict a person's ability to pee out their salts. So they don't pee out their salts, they keep more minerals in the system and all of a sudden the body can function a little bit better and it doesn't go into this shut everything down seizure type situation. So the fact that the anti-seizure medications are improving these RLS symptoms for a lot of people is a strong confirmation in our mind that it's a lack of minerals that are creating the symptoms in the first place. Now the reason a lot of people will be dealing with low minerals is going to take us to step number two, which is to fix any digestive malfunctions. When someone doesn't have enough minerals in the system, it's usually because digestion is not functioning well enough to break that food down properly so that the body can pull all the minerals out of that food. That's why you eat food. You eat food to get fuel and minerals and nutrients that your body needs to function correctly. So if you're dealing with any digestive symptoms, anything like burping or bloating or constipation or diarrhea or acid reflux or nausea or, or even skin issues, 
All of these are really strong signs that some form of digestion is not working correctly. We need to be able to properly acidify the food in our stomach, and then when that acidified product leaves the stomach, it needs to be met by alkaline bile that was stored in the gallbladder, and this alkaline product meeting the acid product creates this sizzle that really helps us bust the food apart and pull all the minerals out of that food. So the problem is, it's very common for someone not to be making enough stomach acid, and it's also very common nowadays for someone's bile to become too thick and sticky to flow correctly. So if either of these sides of digestion is not working correctly for you, then you may not be able to access all the minerals in the food that you're eating, and the minerals in the system are going too low. Now we'll point you in the direction of how to figure out if you're having digestive issues in a minute, but I want to go to step number three because it can go hand in hand with these last couple steps. And that is to reduce your carb or sugar intake, especially liquid sugars. This is why you hear a lot about, hey, don't drink alcohol because it's going to magnify your RLS. So what happens is, remember these minerals are important in that tissue level to allow those tissues to relax. But the problem is that calcium is one of those big minerals that needs to be available at the tissue level. But calcium loves to follow sugar. Just like you used to follow an ice cream truck, calcium likes to follow sugar. So when we're consuming too many sugars or carbohydrates that are converted to sugar, or especially liquid forms of sugar like a soda or, or alcohol that processes just like a liquid sugar, those liquid sugars hit your body a lot harder and faster than like even a candy bar would. So when too much sugars, carbohydrates, or liquid sugars are going into the system, too much calcium is leaving the tissues to follow those sugars. And that's stripping those tissues of the minerals that they need to be able to relax. Now, a lot of people are eating too many carbohydrates or sugars because that's the only way their body can get fuel. If their digestion isn't working well enough to properly break down proteins or emulsify fats and, and turn that into fuel, then the only access that the body has to fuel is to have carbohydrates and these, especially this processed junk that's practically broken down when it comes in the package. You don't have to really digest a, a Pop-Tart. It's kind of already ready to go and easily access fuel from. So a lot of people gravitate more towards these carbs and sugars because they can't properly process the proteins and the fats. So this leads us back to this digestive issue and if you're having any digestive symptoms, you really need to correct digestion so that you can reduce your need for these carbohydrates and sugars that are pulling all the calcium out of the tissue level. One step that can help if this is the cause of your RLS is to supplement with the amino acid lysine. Lysine helps us push calcium back to the tissue level. Now, it's not going to correct horrible behavior. If you're just eating donuts and cookies all day, taking lysine is not going to be enough to push calcium back to the right place. You still need to work on making better choices. But for some people, lysine can get them out of a tough spot and help get a little more calcium down there and allow their legs to feel a little bit better. Now, when we look at step number four, we're going to understand that there really are other causes for RLS. Because step number four is to correct any imbalances or irregularities at the tissue or cellular level. Now, a lot of people now are finally starting to understand that lactic acidosis is the cause of restless leg syndrome for a lot of people. It's an excess of lactic acid in the system and in those tissues that's either causing those tissues to fry in the acidity or just making them uncomfortable. Now, what's important to understand is that you don't have to overexercise to have an excess buildup of lactic acid. Dr. Emanuel Rivisi helped us understand that there's a natural circadian rhythm at the cellular level in our bodies. And during the day, our bodies should be in a more catabolic state where the body's really good at creating energy and it also breaks down tissue so it can be rebuilt and repaired. And then at night, we should move into an anabolic state where the body's really good at resting and rebuilding and repairing all those tissues. So you can see that both of these states are appropriate. You really want to have both of them. The problem is some people can get stuck in one of these states too often or too far into that state. And when they're stuck too far into that state, it can create a lot of issues. For example, if someone is stuck too far in this anabolic state most of the time, it can change the way the body operates at the cellular level. It also can change the way the body creates energy. The body likes to create energy through fermentation when it's in this anabolic state. So this is common for the body to create energy this way, but it's not supposed to be the way the body creates the energy the majority of the time. 
So if a person is stuck in this anabolic state and they're creating their energy through fermentation, a byproduct of this fermentation is lactic acid. So a person doesn't have to work out at all. They don't have to exercise or lift weights in any manner and they can still be creating way too much lactic acid if their body is creating all this energy through fermentation. And if they can't get rid of this lactic acid, it's going to build up and it's going to create a lot of problems like anxiety. That can be one problem that excess lactic acid can create. But for a lot of people, it's RLS because it's making those tissues uncomfortable. This also helps us understand why a lot of people have a magnification of their RLS symptoms at night. This is when the body moves even more into that anabolic state. So if a person is already stuck in this anabolic state most of the time, when it gets to nighttime, when the body's like, hey, it's time to go more anabolic and do all these nighttime things, then it can really magnify all the problems that that excessive anabolic state is creating. To understand this better, we'll put a link in the description below for our video on understanding an anabolic imbalance that'll give you more insights into that. Now, there are other irregularities or imbalances that can create problems at the tissue level. Now, the pH of the body can be important for a wide variety of reasons, but when I start talking about pH, I don't want you to think that I'm saying, oh, you need to alkalize or die, like a lot of these gurus talk about these alkalizing diets that everybody needs to alkalize or they'll be dead by Thursday. That's not what I'm saying. There's a lot of fiction in that world because the body should not have a certain pH. There should be different pHs in different parts of the body. The stomach should be very acidic, almost like battery acid acidic, and yet our blood should be leaning a little bit on the alkaline side. So if anybody's telling you that you need to alkalize this and do all that, it's fictional. It's true that it can improve situations for some people where their bloodstream may be leaning on the acidic side, but the bloodstream leaning to alkaline can create just as many problems. What we need to use this information to understand is that when some tissues are leaning too far out of balance in either the alkaline side or the acid side, it can change how things are working at the tissue level as well. If some tissue is leaning too alkaline, it can make that tissue fluid too acidic just because it's adjusting where body chemistry is. So a lot of times a person can be frying in acidity with their tissues and that's creating this discomfort that makes them want to move it around and create this RLS type symptoms. This also helps us understand why some people see relief by taking baking soda with their RLS symptoms. It's because those tissues are frying in acidity and using that alkaline baking soda is helping adjust that pH and balance it out a little bit. Now I do not suggest you doing this for your RLS. It's a horrible idea. Baking soda basically turns off your stomach acid and turns off your ability to digest your food and pull all the minerals out of your food, like we were just saying. Still, it can be a test that someone can do and say, hey, if, if I take this little bit of baking soda with water away from food, do my symptoms get worse or better? That may give you some indication of what may be going on with your body chemistry, but you really want to look at your body chemistry to understand why things leaning too far in the wrong direction. Now to understand how to look at your unique bioindividuality, I'm going to give you two totally free resources in the description below this video. So my book, Kick Your Fat in the Nuts, teaches you how to run simple self-tests at home using tools that you can pick up at a pharmacy or a health food store, and that'll help you understand where imbalances may be going wrong, and also, are you dealing with malfunctions in your digestive system that are restricting your ability to pull minerals and nutrients out of your food? So the book is available on Amazon, but we're gonna give you a link below where you can download the whole thing for free and get it totally for free. And if you hate reading books and you'd rather poke your eyes out than read a book, we also have a totally free digestion course that'll walk you through watching videos and stuff. So we'll put the link to both of those totally free resources in the description below this video. But you can see that how can there be one solution for RLS when there can be so many different underlying causes that are creating it from person to person. So you really have to look at your body and figure out what's going on with you. For now, if you think you might be dealing with an overly anabolic situation, watch our video on understanding an anabolic imbalance to get more insights there. I can't wait to hear about your results.